younger siblings taking precedence over older siblings isn't the way things are supposed to happen in the world, but it is a recurring pattern in the Bible that tells us something important about God's intentions. Hello, I'm Stuart Baskin, pastor of First Presbyterian Church of Tyler, Texas, and this is your daily devotional for Tuesday, July 14th, 2020. There is a repeated pattern in Genesis of younger sons taking precedence over their elder siblings, sometimes with tragic consequences. It is a pattern repeated often enough that we begin to suspect there is deeper meaning in it than the stories themselves let on. Understanding this pattern is an important piece of our project of identifying pivotal passages of Scripture that help us understand the rest of the Bible. The classic story of the younger son supplanting the older son is the story of Jacob and Esau. It begins, of course, with their birth, which foreshadows Jacob's theft of Esau's blessing. The story goes like this. Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife because she was barren, and the Lord granted his prayer, and his wife Rebekah conceived. The children struggled together within her, and she said, If it is to be this way, why do I live? So she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples born of you shall be divided. The younger one shall be stronger than the other, and the elder shall serve the younger. When her time to give birth was at hand, there were twins in her womb. The first came out red, all his body like a hairy mantle, so they named him Esau. Afterward, his brother came out, with his hand gripping Esau's heel, so he was named Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when she bore them. As the boys grow up, Esau becomes his father's favorite, while Jacob becomes his mother's. Esau is depicted as a man's man, a burly, outdoorsy type. Jacob, on the other hand, is depicted as a bit of a mama's boy, preferring to stay inside and not engage in outdoor activities. Since Esau was born first, birthright and blessing belonged to him. But at one point, he trades his birthright to Jacob in exchange for a pot of stew. Then, when Isaac grows old and knows that he will die soon, he declares that it is time to give Esau his blessing. But Rebekah, Isaac's wife, conspires with Jacob to steal the blessing by tricking Isaac into believing Jacob is Esau. Then, once Isaac has blessed Jacob, Esau returns to receive his blessing. A clearly distressed Isaac realizes he has been tricked. No problem, right? Just go tell Jacob that the blessing was given to him by mistake. But in ancient Near Eastern culture, once a blessing was given, it could not be rescinded. Jacob has the blessing, and neither Isaac nor Esau can change it. Why is this important? What's in a birthright and a blessing? The two are closely tied together, and they signify that the one who has received them is the rightful heir to the family fortune. But in this case, there's something else even more important. The heir to Isaac would be the one through whom the promise to Abraham would continue. In other words, there was a lot at stake. So why would God permit the birthright and blessing to go to the younger brother? To put it simply, it is a sign of things to come. It is a sign that in God's kingdom, the ways of the world will be turned upside down. As we will see when we get to the New Testament, the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. 
in calling Abraham and giving him the promise of land and descendants and the promise that his family would be a blessing to all the families of the earth, God declares his intention to set the world right again. And one of the signs of that future promise is the reversal of fortune of twin sons. The world turned upside down. Now may God continue to bless you and keep you in all that you do this day and in all the days ahead.